Adventures in Supply Chain podcast is pleased to present this video episode of the Coronavirus and Supply Chain series with Chris Richards, International Sales Manager at Steam Logistics, one of the fastest growing companies in accordance to Inc. Magazine's list of America's fastest growing companies. In this episode, we talked about what is involved in international logistics, what are the elements that need to be considered, what are the top trends, opportunities, and challenges, what is the impact of COVID-19, what are the major changes in ocean and air freight? How can companies be more prepared for these challenges? What is the importance of technology and data on international logistics? How can you have visibility and react immediately when issues arise considering that there are different companies in the supply chain? What are your thoughts or how do you see the holiday season and Chinese New Year from an international logistics perspective? How is it going to be different? This episode is sponsored by USM Supply Chain. USM stands for Unstoppable, Scalable, Mindful Supply Chain. Check us out at usmsupplychain.com to scale up your profits together with your supply chain. And now with you, your host Marcia and her amazing guest, Chris Richards. Good morning, Chris. A pleasure to have you on the show. So welcome. Good morning. Thank you. And we have heard a short introduction about yourself, but I think it would be great if you could tell us about your organization and also about your role. Okay, yeah. So my name is Chris Richards. I work for Steam Logistics. We're an international freight forwarder located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're one of the fastest growing NVOCCs in the U.S., and my primary role uh, is in import and export operations for both air and ocean. Great, great. So the topic today, of course, is going to be international logistics. And there are so many changes in that area. So it's great that, that you are going to talk about this. And so let's start with what is involved in international logistics what element should we consider because it's not simply to take the product from a to b right there's much more is complex so if you could tell us a little bit more about that that would be helpful yeah so there's a lot involved with international logistics uh, Inco terms play a major role, so who's responsible uh, for paying for what part of the transport. Um, so the, the biggest things for me is the developing the relationship. So obviously when you're dealing uh, with different cultures, um, different destinations, origins, uh, it's very important to have good relationships in place. Um, you know, and then quoting, planning is a, is a huge part of it. Obviously, you have to know how much it's going to cost before you're uh, going to move the goods. Um, and then booking the freight is a, is a very big part of it, as well as tracking the freight. So making mm -hmm. sure um, it's delivered. Um, some of, you know, the, those are some of the biggest elements as far as um, the international logistics goes. Now, for my side, um, as far as the imports and exports, um, I would say that the booking is the kind of the hardest um, part of it as far as getting the space with all of the issues that we're having right now, um, especially out of Asia. Uh, we're seeing, you know, a lot of issues with booking the containers. Yes, yes. And I have noticed uh, that sometimes we as procurement or supply chain, we have unrealistic expectations, right? Because we always want to have it now. And then say, and we say, okay, we are willing to pay for air freight, but can we get it tomorrow? And that, right, is very yep. challenging. It can be very difficult. And yes, you are right. So yeah, if somebody needs those goods immediately, uh, maybe they'll change from ocean to air. Um, you know, and that change can be dramatic as far as the operations go, but you know, we're here and we're here to help. So especially during these difficult times. Yes, very dynamic, even more than before, right? Oh yeah, certainly. Yes, yes. And what trends in international logistics do you see like challenges, opportunities at this moment? 
Yeah, so right now the uh, biggest challenges I'll start with is the capacity. So um, there's just no space on vessels right now. So, uh, you know, especially for the import side into the U.S., uh, we're seeing very uh, difficult difficulties out of Asia. Um, there's equipment shortages. So when we do make the bookings uh, and they try to go get the containers, the containers, uh, you know, won't be in the port. Um, we're seeing some delayed uh, times on the rail. So if it's going through Canada, there's been some strikes recently causing delays there, um, as well as uh, just delays in the ports. Um, LAX is, is super congested right now. Um, so that's creating uh, some problems. And then as well as the rates. So uh, spot rates for ocean rates are the highest they've ever been. Um, and they've continued to rise until about September 15th. Um, once Chinese government stepped in, it seemed that the, the rates have stayed steady um, since then. So kind of what, that's kind of the challenges we're seeing, but um, what brings the opportunities there is obviously we're building stronger uh, partnerships with um, our partners in Asia, as well as uh, partnerships with our customers. And then we're also able to um, book spot rates for some of our annual contract customers. So if somebody's not able to get their allocation on their annual fixed contract, we're able to book the spot rates, even though it is tremendously higher. Sometimes people, uh, like you said, just need the product. So um, instead of just waiting to get their allocation, they'll go ahead and, and reach out to me, say, hey, Chris, can you try to book it on some spot rates? Um, I'm not getting my weekly allocation. And then we're able to, uh, you know, fill it with that yes yes it and, and as you are saying it's very challenging but also there are opportunities and i have a follow-up question that is related to what you are mentioning it's about the impact that covid 19 has had on, on this and you mentioned relationships so i think it's different if the company was already having that those relationships and right because now covid is like is showing there's a limited space so what are your thoughts about the the impact of coronavirus on international logistics yeah so definitely um once covid hit everything started to get crazy um the yes. rate went the rates went sky high the space uh, you know, was very limited, um, equipment shortage again, um, but like kind of what you said with the partnerships. So, you know, we've really been able to build strong partnerships with some of our customer bases, um, you know, really just diving in and, and getting it done for them. Um, you know, it's been some very difficult times. And, uh, you know, I think that with COVID right now, it's, you know, still going to be a thing for a little while. There's no really end game right now. So, um, you know, obviously it's affecting everything from rates, the space, um, and then, you know, even people that are importing products now. So, you know, some of the big shippers, maybe like Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart, yes. they may not be affected by these um, increases, but it's the smaller importers um, that are really feeling the effects of this. And they don't know if, you know, they're going to continue to do business, um, yes. you know, because the rates have gone so high. So I think that right now, People are just trying to, you know, get through this, these hard times. And I think everyone's kind of hopeful that we've kind of got through the worst and now things, you know, maybe will level out. Yes, yes. And, and Chris, do you think that these effects are for both for ocean freight and for air freight? Like you mentioned capacity. Is it in both in ocean and air? Yeah. So we've seen it in both ocean and air. So with air, um, typically things are loaded onto passenger planes um, for cargo that's smaller. Um, so, you know, since those passenger flights aren't going out with people not traveling as much due to COVID, the rates are extremely high. Um, you're having to book it on a charter flight um, or maybe reserve a half a charter. So it's, you know, it's getting very expensive um, from what people are used to. So if somebody was doing a lot of air freight before, um, you know, you were looking probably at three to four dollars a kilo. Now you're seeing anything from 10 to 15 dollars a kilo. So, you know, wow. three to four times the price uh, and then as well as ocean. So it used to be anywhere from 1600 to 1800 for a 40 foot from China to LAX. And now uh, we're seeing highs of 3800. So almost, you know, double 
what it was in March. Um, so COVID has definitely put a major impact on, on the pricing. Yes, yes, we, we have experienced that, <laughs> unfortunately. And um, it, what is the importance of technology? How can you have that visibility throughout the supply chain? Because you are talking about different partners, even customs, right? That you mentioned with Canada, that lately there were some delays. So what is the importance of technology and data? Yeah, so I think that data and technology is very important in international logistics. So before I had gotten into international logistics, um, I came into it and I saw the lack of visibility mm -hmm. and track and trace. And uh, I even have customers that were still using paper um, to write everything down. So uh, as Steam Logistics, we have kind of a different approach for that. So um, we're a paperless environment. Uh, we have a platform called Steam Vision, um, which handles all of our track and trace capabilities. Um, it's also a database for all documents, for customs, um, or you know, bills of lading, commercial documents. Uh, and then we also have a business intelligence feature as well, which is able to uh, show you your landed cost per container um, or per kilo, however you want to measure it. So um, we've really taken advantage of, as far as the track and trace tool, our customers love it. If they book freight, uh, it immediately goes into our system. They get to see the ETD, the ETA. They know exactly when the product's leaving exactly when it's arriving. Uh, you know, they don't have to send me an email. They're able to log into the mm -hmm. portal. Um, and it's really made it easier, especially when customers are shipping large volumes. Um, you know, instead of multiple emails back and forth uh, mm -hmm. with your forwarder, you're able to log into one platform. Uh, we can send customized reports to your email uh, and Excel spreadsheets to make it uh, pretty and easy to read. Because we're really just trying to make uh, you know, the importer's job a little bit less difficult, right? So you got so many documents and you have so many milestones mm -hmm. uh, throughout the shipment. Uh, and it's very hard to keep track of, of all that stuff. Um, so we're really just trying to use technology to our advantage. Um, so that way we can make our customers' lives easier. Yes, and I, and I, I agree with you. It's very important because also it's important to know if there are delays because that could happen and it's outside of what you can control. So at least we know and we can take action. We can communicate with the customer. So that's why it's so important to have visibility on real time. Oh yeah, you said it best. You're better proactive than reactive. <laughs> exactly, yes, <laughs> yes, very important. And how can the companies be better prepared for, for all of this and how STEAM, STEAM Logistics is handling all of these challenges? Yeah, so what I would say the best thing is to you know have, start a conversation, but one of the most important things is really knowing your booking forecasts. Mm -hmm. So if you know what you're going to be shipping, uh, if you can provide that, that information, we're able to work with our partners um, overseas or here locally with the steamship lines um, in order to try to get that space, right? So if we're ahead of the game, uh, anywhere from three to four weeks, uh, we're able to, you know, find the space, book the space, reserve the space, uh, you know, without any delays. So right now, when customers are sending a forecast with a week to two weeks in advance, we're still not able to book it right away um, just due to the capacity. So my recommendation is, is get those forecasts, um, know exactly what you're going to be shipping, and go ahead and plan ahead. Um, you know, because obviously the last thing you want is your goods not to move. Um, so I think that if you plan ahead, have your forecast ready, uh, and then go ahead and book as early as possible, uh, then you can try to combat some of this. Yes, that, that is a great point. I think uh, companies, we need to do better as companies in planning. So not to give you a last minute notice that is much more challenging. And then of course, nobody is happy because- Oh yeah, yes. so, the earlier yes. the better. Yes, and, and move faster, right? When you provide quotes, just go ahead and book. Right. Yes, yes. And, and Chris, what are your thoughts about the upcoming holiday season? 
here and also the new the Chinese New Year that is in February. Yeah, so as I kind of had mentioned before, I think that the, the rates will remain steady. I don't think they're going to go up anymore. Um, I don't think they'll go down anymore either. I think they'll just stay at the, at the level field they're at now until Chinese New Year. Um, I think that the demand will still be there until uh, Chinese New Year. And I don't think that right now the demand is necessarily more uh, than it was last year, but it's so compressed due to COVID um, that it almost, you know, looks like that. Um, so I think that, you know, the capacity is obviously still going to be tight until Chinese New Year. I think the demand will still be there, um, you know, but then once Chinese New Year uh, comes back or, you know, once they come back from work, I think everything will start to kind of level out. I think the pricing will start to, to drop a little bit. I don't think there'll be near as much demand. Um, and, you know, I think that the equipment shortages will, will you know, eventually level out. Um, but that's just kind of my thoughts on it till Chinese New Year. I just don't see any major changes up or down uh, until then. It just seems like since September 15th, uh, everything's kind of stayed the same. Uh, and that's kind of what we're hearing from our partners as well. Perfect, perfect. Very helpful. And Chris, if the companies need help, with their freight, with their shipment, how can they reach out to you or to Steam Logistics? What is the best way? Yeah, so if you're looking for spot rates or even looking uh, to sign an annual fixed contract, you can reach out to me. Uh, I have a LinkedIn. My name's Chris Richards. You can also reach out to me via email. My email is Chris period Richards at steamlogistics.com and my phone number is 855-671-9885. Perfect, perfect and thank you so much. The information yeah. is very helpful. I, I enjoy, I, I really like everything related to logistics and this year as I have been saying is like the supply chain year, right? Because we have oh, had yeah. so many challenges. I know it. But opportunities too, so it's great. And, and thank you so much, Chris, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Perfect.